Hi there, everybody. This is Lee, and I'm reporting once again on the presidential debate. Um, I have managed to see most of the footage, the original footage of the debate. Uh, the um, on the fly uh, insertion of Jill Stein answering questions in real time via live stream. I, I saw that. Um, available on Periscope and Twitter and her Facebook page and YouTube as well. And then I also saw the the day after footage that she also filmed with Democracy Now! Um, inserting herself or Amy Goodman inserted her into the debate footage. And it looks really good. Um, very well produced um, with the um, Democracy Now! with um, Amy Goodman explaining the format and it's really well done and um, it's available at Democracy Now! and while I ha have the numbers for the original footage with Periscope the on the fly responses that Jill Stein made I don't have the numbers on the Democracy Now! video but she did surprisingly well um, she actually got a lot of views and so I'm going to run through the numbers real quick. And these come from Jill Stein. It looks like on Facebook she received over 1 million views um, during the actual live stream itself. And then um, approximately 4.3 million viewers were reached um, in total on Facebook via the Facebook um, footage. And then on Twitter, um, there were 2.8 million impressions on September 26th. That means it was the night of the debates itself. And then um, that number has since grown to 7.6 million impressions. And that's the day after um, September 27th. So people are watching the archive footage of Jill Stein's. Uh, debate footage. So that's 7.6 million impressions via Twitter. And then RT America reposted the live stream. And so it's grown from 100,000 views up to 800,000 reach. And then Periscope itself had 55,000 views. And um, according to Twitter, this is really impressive um, since that's the very first time that they use Periscope. And then, of course, like I said, I don't have the um, numbers for the Democracy Now! Um, expanded debate footage that Amy Goodman moderated. But Jill Stein reached a lot of people. Um, I think this was excellent, what she did. Um, when life hands you lemons, you paint that, <laughs> you paint it gold, <laughs> and that's what she did. She got a lemon from the debate commission, um, and she made lemonade and lemon meringue and lemon pie and all kinds of stuff, and gave us some excellent information while she was at it, provided a, a comparison and a contrast, not only to, um, well, well, she compared and contrasted herself in this footage to Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, and Jill Stein was the grown-up. Um, there was all that bickering back and forth, if you recall, um, between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Um, it was like Jill Stein was the grown-up, um, saying like, well, that's enough about that. Let's talk about the real issues. And then she went on to talk about the real issues. So... She didn't get baited, of course. Uh, she stuck on topic with the issues. And unlike the two candidates, she did not have an advance notification of what the questions were going to be. She answered off the fly. And then with the Democracy Now! footage, she, of course, was able to expand her answers. So um, I say that that was well done, uh, very uh, well orchestrated, um, the theater uh, <laughs> prior to the debate itself with um, her showing up and then being denied entry 
and then the protests and the rally and the interviews and the media attention. And there were 24 arrests of her supporters, um, but rather than being taken into custody herself, Jill Stein was escorted away in handcuffs and then released and I guess told to be about her business. <laughs> And then she did her 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 debate uh, where she inserted herself into the footage um, via live stream and then um, conducted some more interviews. Uh, she had interviews with Salon Magazine, the Huffington Post, with Fox News. And so she got um, focus, media attention on her uh, party's platform and the issues. So I think she did a really great um, job with what she uh, planned out. Um, it was very good decision making, I think. Um, it might have um, been a repeat of the 2012 where she did get arrested. And then with the warrant in North Dakota, who knows how long they might have held her. And then we would have missed all this. And so I do think that her and her campaign team made the exact right choice to plan it this way, to bring focus and attention to the issues of free speech, militarization of our police, um, democracy, the, the lack of uh, real issues being addressed by the so-called front-runner run, candidates. Um, and that debate itself um, was significant in that there was attention paid to certain issues that were of concern. If you're progressive, if you were a supporter of Bernie Sanders, the fact that it was Donald Trump who raised the issue of what occurred during the primary um, against Bernie Sanders and that there is no response forthcoming from Hillary Clinton and that um, Donald Trump did confront Hillary Clinton on her stance on the TPP and her intentions. Um, and also her link to NAFTA. Um, the birtherism, I thought that was, you know, actually a side issue because that comes to a draw between them both. They're both guilty on that issue. Um, and then also um, there are many things that weren't addressed that hopefully will be addressed in the upcoming debates. Um, there was a lot of time spent bickering back and forth between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, that a lot of time was wasted. A lot of the valuable time of the American electorate was wasted between them. Um, and so um, hopefully the future debates between the presidential candidates will be a little bit more educational. Um, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump will debate again on October, October 9th and then October 19th. And hopefully Jill Stein will participate either inside the debate uh, hall itself or via uh, a similar arrangement to what she did, which she pulled off with, with great success. Um, I haven't added all those um, numbers up just now, but it looks like Jill Stein has, and she says um, the number of impressions overall of people who viewed her footage 15 million and rising, and that's within the first 24 hours. And so that means that there's people who might not have seen her Democracy Now! footage or had a chance to view last night's debates, um, but maybe they'll watch it tonight or have some time to click around. And so that number is just going to go up, 15 million and rising. So she um, accomplished so much. I'm really happy for her, uh, her campaign team, and the Green Party itself, and then us, the electorate, who actually had someone available to address real issues with real substance instead of name-calling, personal insults, one-liners, and um, snide remarks. Uh, we deserve so much better. And Jill Stein performed um, definitely for the people. Um, so, um, like Jill Stein says, there's two more debates. And so she's asking for more contributions to her campaign. Um, the traveling expense, legal expense, um, just the cost to continue to um, 
you know, do the administration and running of her campaign and the outreach. Um, she says that it, for the future campaigns, or the future debates, um, the open the debate strategy is one way to make a very real impact. Um, she wants people to learn more about the Green New Deal, uh, to support 20 million good jobs, uh, com combating climate change, counseling student debt, moving to 100% clean renewable energy by 2030, ending police violence, and the militarized police, the kind of what showed up to Hofstra, um, things like this. And um, she says that one of the protesters who was arrested was Sherry Hankala, uh, Jill Stein's 2012 running mate. And so she goes on to describe that encounter. Uh, but she's saying that um, the events of 2012 and 2016 do provide proof that we are living in a, a police state um, if the recent police shootings didn't already um, convince anyone of that. Uh, but she's saying that the Green Party is definitely standing up to address these issues. Um, and so other topics that um, did not get addressed in that debate um, were poverty, abortion, climate change, um, well, water policy, uh, immigration, health care, student debt, privacy, uh, LGBT, LBGTQ rights, um, and then drug policy or legalization um, of certain drugs like marijuana policy. So these are hopefully forthcoming. Um, before the October 9th debate, um, there's going to be a vice presidential debate. Um, this is going to be with Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump's vice presidential candidates. So that would be Mike Pence um, standing for Donald Trump and then Tim Kaine standing for Hillary Clinton. And I'm really hoping that um, Ajumu Baraka will have a chance to participate um, either inside the debate hall or something similar to what Jill Stein was able to do. Um, Gary Johnson's vice, president, pri, vice presidential candidate is going to be um, William Weld, and he will not. Uh, he was not issued an invitation to um, the uh, vice presidential debate, and so uh, it's possible that that the Libertarian Party has an alternative plan as well. But um, it does pain me to address the fact that Ajumu Baraka will not be standing on stage being the sole military veteran um, that is running on a presidential ticket as Jill Stein's VP. Um, he put on a uniform. He served the country. He protected U.S. interests. Um, and he returned and became an international human rights activist. And he will not be allowed to speak. And it's kind of um, interesting the way that a military veteran is treated in this country. It's a reflection of the way veterans are treated overall in this country. They're marginalized, silenced, and ignored uh, while people talk around them um, and their needs go unaddressed. And, you know, you ask, well, who will speak for the veterans? Hillary Clinton certainly cannot. Neither can Donald Trump. Neither can Tim Kaine. Neither can Mike Pence. It would be nice if we actually did have a veteran on stage articulating issues related to military policy, foreign policy, um, war and peace, interventions and re regime changes, and definitely human rights. And so maybe something between now and October may change. Um, the vice presidential candidate um, uh, debate is going to be October 4th. It's going to be in Virginia. Um, hopefully something will change. But if not, I really do support what Jill Stein has accomplished um, via Periscope and Twitter, uh, Facebook. YouTube and other supporting social media 
as well as what Democracy Now! has helped them to accomplish. Um, a debate um, that addresses a majority of the issues that are relevant um, to the majority of North Americans, um, issues that need to be addressed. I really would like to see that happen, and I hope it does. But overall, I wanted to say that was just great for the Green Party, um, and I'm going to, again, post those links in the description. Um, and then that way you'll be able to follow up and learn for yourself what the third option had to say about public policy in the USA. Good luck.